So we know that if you have an application and it wants to connect over to the queue manager, we are going to use something called the MQI. We've been looking at this quite a bit. Remember, this is also called a channel adapter. And it is, in fact, part of the MQI API. So we know all of that. We've been doing that for quite a while. Now, the way we have been drawing this is that we've put the queue manager here. And we've been sort of drawing it like this. MQI connects to the queue manager. But actually, that's not entirely accurate. What's really happening is it's connecting over to something called a listener. So what does that mean? Well, a listener sits right here. Actually, let's draw it like this. And that listener is what the MQI is going to connect to. So it's going to make its connection like so. And the listener is essentially a process that sits on the queue manager and it listens on TCP port. It doesn't have to, but it usually listens on TCP port. The default TCP port is 1414. And we're about to see this in action. So in both Windows and in Linux, you can run a net stat to give you a list of the processes running on a given port. And so if you're on Linux here, you could do something like TLPN, T for TCP, L for listening, P for port, and N for numeric. And then you could give it the what you're listening for. Well, the port, we're going to grep for 1414 because that's our port for... Uh, the default port for MQ, and sure enough, we get a result. However, I just want to point out very quickly that in that stat, you will see if you run its manual man command that this program is obsolete. So, in the case of Linux, we should really be using SS instead, and SS is very similar. It's, uh, it's also very easy to use. Actually, in some ways, it's easier. I, I sort of think of it as the turnip command because it's you can run these flags without the I turnip and you can do the same thing to a grep for 1414 and this is actually sort of nice and a lot of ways it's quite nicer quite a bit nicer because you can get the name resolved uh, for where it's going and then also get the port and you can also see uh, the actual process number so if you're not fam familiar with the ss command just very briefly you can pipe this to head and you can see the what's coming first is going to be local address and then the rem the peer or the remote one so what you're looking at here let me clean this up with 1414 is you have this process which is the amq um, amq by the way stands for you can see it here advanced message queuing protocol you're going to see this quite a bit actually am QP, an open source wire protocol that's used to receive, queue, route, and deliver messages. And so this is what started first. It's listening on port 1414. And then look what connected over to it. Java connected over to it. And if you want to get a bit more detail about this, this is interesting. You can do a PS-F, which will give you full details about port, about process 13536. And then you'll see that, uh, you'll see the, the, the current PID and then parent of that PID was 9881. So if you wanted to see, well, who's 9881? And look at this, it's the run MQ listener. So that's what started the AMQ. So this is just a quick way to, ex to explain that the listener is in fact running and it's, it is the Java connected over to it because of what we would expect. We have, we have, we have a Java application uh, connected over to our listener. And then just to give you a bit more background about this, the AMQRMPPA that we saw, that is the channel process pooling job. So we had sort of talked about that before. It's just a way for a process, which is a program that's running, to go in and grab potentially um, a process ID and then, you know, fork out and then potentially be able to run multiple threads of itself. So what we're doing here is we, we are... And we were asking for this 9881, and we had seen that we it, the process running would be AMQ RMPPA. Well, we can do something interesting here, which is to check for, do a grep for this 9881, but we're going to proceed that with this command here, which will list out all of the threads and all of the, so really 
the current PID, the parent PID that we talked about. And then look at this. We have multiple threads listening on port, t port 1414. So although we have one listener, the system is ready to grab 1414 uh, against multiple threads. And that's a good idea, right? Because if you have two or three or four processors, then you want multiple um, you want multiple threads, you want multiple processors, cores, to be able to grab part of that, uh, part of those connections to be able to handle more of them. So we more quickly handle more processing. And then here's just a visual of what I'm talking about here. So you can have, you, these are the threads, the thre each thread can run on an individual core, and you could have two cores on a given physical socket. And of course, most machines these days are VMs, but you get the idea. You can run multiple threads and then you have an, a listener running on each core and that's a really good idea to handle all that traffic but anyway let's go back here so I, let me clean up my uh, diagram here a little bit basically this is exactly what we have been talking about all along so we just saw those listeners I'm gonna straighten this line out and we you know potentially could have you know more than one connection coming in or could be handled at least by more than one thread internally but the point is it is on 1414 that is the idea of a listener. Now, this is in the case of MQI over to a listener on the QM. But what happens now if we have two Q managers connecting to each other? So we know that there are two kinds of channels. We've already talked about that. One channel is the message channel. So that's like one line going across here. These are unidirectional, so if you want communication to travel both ways you need to set up two of those and we talk about pairs if that seems a little confusing go back and look at the channels uh, discussion and then separately we have what's these unit or these bi-directional channels that happens in the case of MQI like we've been talking about here so those are the two kinds of channels MQI channels like that one and then you have the channels for QM uh, sorry for message so that, you know between between QMs between Q managers which are uh, unidirectional, of course, the channel message channels. Okay, so why am I talking about that? Because when you are setting up two Q managers to talk to each other, there is a listener involved in here as well. So it's essentially the same sort of thing. We're going here, and there's a listener. But then on this side, there's potentially a listener. Right? And, and it depends on who is. It's not necessarily going to go from listener to listener. But if you are listening, so, you know, if this is the recipient, it will be listening there. And this is an extract from the MQ primer, so listeners. One further part of the inner communication configuration is the concept of a listener, this is what we've been talking about. Listeners are programs that wait for inbound network connection requests and then start an appropriate channel to handle the communication. So we haven't talked, and by the way, they are um, a standard configuration is to have TCP IP listener waiting for on connections on port 1444. And if you have multiple queue managers running on the same system, they require individual listeners to be configured on different ports. And those are different processes. So here you might be wondering, well, hold on a second. I remember that when two queue managers talk to each other, they are going to use MCA. And you are exactly right. So this is MCA, right? And this is MCA. So the question now is, well, all right, but where is my listener? How does that fit into this whole mix? And the way this works is that both are involved. So if we want to draw this correctly, we're going to need to come back a step. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to draw this quite a bit larger to represent what's really going on. And we're going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to draw this quite a bit larger and go like this. Because when you are using your MCA, it's going to look like this. So we're going to set up MCA. And that MCA is going to talk to this MCA. But the question is, how, how do, you know, again, where is the listener at? So in fact, what's happening is that the MCA comes in like in second position. I mean, it happens like second. So if we bring this down a little bit, you can see that what's going to happen first is, unsurprisingly, that listener. And that's because you need to listen, have a port opened up so that communication can take place. And so what you're going to get is 
this sort of connection where the MCA is actually going to connect to the listener. The listener is going to then connect to the MCA. And then, and we haven't talked about this yet, but separately, you're going to have the channel be the third part here. And we'll cover that later, but the channel is involved. All of that before you actually get to the queue that you want to talk to.